Hello, hello everybody and welcome to Audio Talaya Extra. This is our third show uh, since we begin a couple of weeks ago and this is going to be our first show in English and here we have um, Raquel Castro. Welcome Raquel, how are you? <laughs> hello Edu, how are you? Good, good. Um, <laughs> Ah, and people in the chat are showing up. Um, uh, let's get right into it. Um, for those who don't know her, uh, Raquel is a documentalist, a curator, and a researcher, and, and mostly she's a sound enthusiast, and she's uh, very keen into sound listening and the environment, the cities, the soundscape, and all, all these things surrounding the listening experience as, a, I guess, a creative field. And um, we're going to chat uh, about a few things, but uh, uh, her most well-known projects are uh, Lisboa Soa, which we are going to talk about for sure. This is a festival happening every year in Lisbon since 2016. I'm right? Yes. Is it right? Correct. Okay. And, um, and she's also involved in, mm. in making documentaries. Um, for those who know her already, you may know Sound Walkers, which is a documentary from uh, 2008, if I'm not wrong. Um, that triggered at least it's the first time I, I knew about you was about song walkers and I found it really interesting and now we, we have um, it's going to be soon enough uh, SOA, uh, your new documentary which uh, from my opinion I guess is like the, the continuation of this research in, in the audiovisual field um, and she's also involved with uh, another research projects like uh, Invisible Cities you were also involved in, in, in Jardines Ephemeros, right? Well, the first edition of um, <coughs> Invisible Places uh, happened in uh, Jardins in February mm. back in 2014. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That that was the, the connection. I knew, I knew about that. Um, the first thing to to that I wanted to talk about with you because um, like it's 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 what we always inter when we interview people we ask about the situation uh, right now, but we want to talk about specifically maybe first. Uh, mm, explain and, and, and let know everybody what, what is exactly Lisboa SOA. And secondly, and after, <laughs> after we, we reach that, um, I want to know how, how this uh, edition 2020 has gone, because I know it's been super difficult. And I think it's interesting that you share with us um, how this uh, unfolded. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> that's true. Lisboa Sua started in 2016. It was the first edition, and um, we've been occupying different public spaces like parks, water reservoirs. You were you participated in the edition of uh, at the reservoirs um, <clears throat> and other public spaces. The idea of the festival is to uh, bring awareness to the environment in general through listening mm -hmm. and uh, through sound art, because there's the basic uh, part of the program, which are sound installations. So the audience is invited to come into a, a place and discover through the years um, and through different sound sonic approaches. And mm -hmm. then we approach different topics uh, related to the environment always because I mean, uh, there are so many uh, understanding uh, layers on, on sound and uh, uh, the way sound art can be considered as a, a kind of a tool, so to say, uh, to you know explore uh, our listening, our connection with the environment, with the world around us. So basically, this has been what we have been doing. And last year, uh, Lis Lisbon was um, awarded the distinction Green Capital of Europe. Mm -hmm. So the festival was invited to be part of this mm -hmm. uh, bigger program. Of course, then uh, <laughs> it appeared the virus, <laughs> which <Yeah. laughs> changed everything. Um, <clears throat> in fact, what happened uh, one year ago, when the virus appeared in most of the countries, also in Portugal, uh, and everything was turned around and upside down. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first idea was like, uh, if, I mean, I was so, I think everyone was, everyone was overwhelmed by 
by all of it. So yeah. you first start to think, should I do something? What is the sense of this? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you, I, I have to say I was paralyzed for, for a few weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, like nothing made sense anymore, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. very strange. I think this was all very, you know, ups and downs. So, mm -hmm. um, but then, uh, I mean, like, uh, and you know, because you have a very active uh, life also. And <laughs> online. <laughs> <laughs> on, on, online nowadays, <laughs> more online. But yeah. anyway, but but um, I mean, as a cultural agent, that mm. as we are, I mean, we have also the responsibility. If you have the means for it, I mean, we cannot give up uh, so easily. So mm. the festival was reprogrammed again. Uh, we couldn't use this, the location that was. Um, uh, that was given to us for for that year. All the program was redone. We opened a call for sound installations to mm -hmm. artists that were yeah. living in Portugal, mm -hmm. and did the several uh, attempts to react to the context. So, I mean, in the end, it was very. Uh, how should I say it? I, I it was a very rewarding experience to do this. Uh, because mm. most of the events were cancelled, yeah, and um, I mean we have the advantage of doing most of the our things open air. So yeah. obviously we had to do it all by the book, and mm. um, you know mm. measuring distance in between yeah, the chairs yeah. mm. and control the entrances, mm. which is something mm. um, kind of strange for us. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but it was uh, important to do it, and uh, and I am very happy that we managed to, with a big uh, effort from the team, we put it yeah. happening. So yeah, that's the, that's the thing. It's it's an, uh, an environmental sound art festival. So mm. uh, we try to bring awareness to the environment uh, through different. Uh, uh, initiatives from installations to performances mm. to workshops, mm. uh, sound walks. Yeah, this is the overall idea of the festival. But it's 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 interesting because you said that at the beginning you were saying that uh, we use some sort of sound art as a, as a tool to talk mm. about the environment, and and this is uh, I think it's pretty crucial to understand in Lisboa as well because I think it's like a uh, a dialogue between uh, what you are offering, um, the way you use the spaces, the public spaces where the festival develops, which is for those who are listening and watching right now, uh, Lisboa so happens in amazing places <laughs> because you have, um, I mean, you have a canvas, a beautiful canvas, which um, it's almost you put in there. It's just going to look and sound awesome generally because the environment helps so much. And, and I can help it to think that um, there is a, a, a deliberated uh, intentionality with it in a way that you are using the spaces as tools to to introduce people to the listening experience and and, and you are again reusing the, the these like uh, amazing spaces um to to tell people what we always tell is like just listen um mm -hmm. and i think this is this is pretty pretty a pretty bold move and also it's it's amazing because um um, it makes a lot of sense when something like the pandemic happens that you end up being able to do the festival um, mm -hmm. because by its own nature, it, it allows this play. It's not the traditional um, context in where you were expected to to have half an audience sitting on, on, on chairs. You have something different to play with. And I don't know if you have this, this feeling, but uh, as an organizer, as a, um, that sound, it has this ability of... of being adaptable to any given circumstance. That's true. And um, it also offers you <laughs> new lenses and new modes of uh, understanding. I, I mean, it's true that we've been lucky to, to use amazing spaces. Um, in fact, they are for itself uh, uh, amazing places to, to just, mm. you know, wander around. Yeah. Um, but again, I think uh, when you do an edition of, of a festival like Lisboa so in one of these places, it will never sound the same. Uh, I, we can repeat these, space, these places again and again. And 
it will always be different. Mm. One thing about public space, I think it's a crucial topic for itself because how to reconsider it in, I mean, for example, now with this, uh, with the pandemics and with the, all the restrictions, I mean, it became even more sensitive to think of it because exactly. mm -hmm. this is the place where you, yeah. have, mm -hmm. where you can feel some freedom, where you can, so, I mean, uh, it should be, uh, again, reconsidered. I think uh, cities have been developing um, many times in many places, at least here in, in, in Portugal with the, for example, in the last years, Lisbon became, Lisbon and Porto and other cities in Portugal became so um, massively touristified. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, public spaces have been sold out <laughs> totally. So, yeah. I mean, how do you appropriate this again? And, and I think uh, uh, sound art has this, because also, I mean, we we all know that uh, the sound uh, field is sometimes can be um, kind of a ghetto thing, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's a bit, a bit too technical sometimes, a bit too close. People think mm. It, mm. most of the people feel. But if you think of it as an experiential, sensorial experience, then it's universal. It's mm -hmm. all languages, it's universe, all levels of knowledge. And this is something that's also because, you know, when I started to research uh, sound, uh, I first discovered acoustic ecology and uh, Marie Schaffer and, you mm -hmm. know, all this mm -hmm. idea of listening education. And there is a, a kind of a politics behind this that really interests me and moves me mm -hmm. on doing these things. Yeah, and I also, hmm. sorry. No, 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 go, go, go. go. <laughs> No, I was just thinking also about, you know, uh, so many disciplines that have been incorporating some techniques that nowadays artists uh, have been using, like, for example, sonification, mm. or which is something which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, translating into sound data that is usually uh, inaudible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, this is uh, also, I mean, a new level of, you go into other uh, layers of mm. what is around you. And yeah, this, 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 yeah, is is this idea of like of of, um, of placing uh, specifically sounds in in, uh, in specific areas, and and again is working. I'm talking because I've been in Lisboa so and <laughs> as an artist, and and it's amazing because it it really does something to to the artists involved and also to the audience, because it brings together different um, different inputs and different layers of understanding of of sound. Mm, but I think this is the best answer f for something you just said about the the fact that the sound art or the the sound enthusiasts. Um, it's it's kind of ghetto, but I think Lisboa is always a good answer to how to break that ghetto, because mm -hmm. I was there in what was uh, 2018, I think. Uh, yeah. Well, 2018, and there was a ton of people there, um, and I guess the the, the kind of like a Portuguese uh, sound art scene it was around. It was more or less I could recognize uh, a few of them, and, and I know some of them, of course. Uh, but I'm sure that there is there was there a ton of people who just were passerbys or people just discovering from from ground zero that if you do this on a uh, classical auditorium with closed doors behind the program and with a lot of text and and, and notes to the concert and stuff like that um, that's a barrier and that's also a, a, a ghettoization but when you do it in this way when you do it um, um, that easy because it's that easy it just happens and it has to do a lot with with this idea of placing sound for me that's my my point of view of of uh, let's see what happens if we instead of using the sound and using the listening experience in an auditorium we do it somewhere else i guess mm -hmm. um also because i mean uh to to if you go to to see for example a sound art show with installations and you know basic sound art so i mean you need to space and time to really enjoy and, and understand the piece. So, mm. the, I mean, there were a lot of things that happened uh, throughout my life, the part of my life that was dedicated to sound, which started like mm. almost 20 years ago or something. When, I mean, it, 
whatever whenever I went to to an auditorium to see a, a, a performance, a concert, or to a, an exhibition of sound art, yeah. I always felt that I mean, for example, a gallery space or a museum. I also tried to do something. Some, for example, in Jardis Ephemeros, I did a. a few uh, curated installations in a, in a museum space mm. and um, I mean it's not the, the <laughs> same situation I always feel for example when I'm most of the times when I'm in an auditorium uh, I feel I would just wanted to be lay, laying down yeah. and watch the stars yeah. mm. and have this freedom yeah. Uh, so mm. yeah, last year, for example, we had to have chairs, <laughs> which is something <laughs> we usually have carpets in the floor. Oh my god! Lay down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. yeah, no, but so, but it it all adds to the experience. I always say, and I I don't have a problem on saying that that uh, sound is it's super cheap in the way that. Um, in the way that uh, anyone, when you give them the right conditions to listen to something, it just triggers something absolutely unbelievable in your head. Um, and that that is not that easy to do it with image, you know, because you also work with video. Um, image is like super straightforward, but sound has this capability of, of, of convincing if, if the right conditions are given, uh, convincing something of, of almost anything. I mean, you mm -hmm. can you can I don't know, do a Francisco Lopez concert to a completely brand new audience with no uh, relation to it. And, and if, if they immerse themselves in that experience, uh, it, it's really convincing. It can, of course, lead to the other way. It's like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't, don't want to be involved on that, but, but it, it really does trigger something. And, mm. and, and these elements adding up, on top of it, this experience, the fact that, that you are listening to something on allocations because in, and we end up, and, and I think it's in the, in the documentary at some point in SOA, somebody says about the, the fact that there is this experience of you recording on location and then it's the memory of yourself recording that specific moment and that's changing the way you perceive that recording or that specific, because we are talking about moments, experiences, so it goes a lot to the memory, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the and the yes, aesthetics of the festival lead you there mm. somehow. So. Yeah, because you talked about immersion, but then you have to have the right conditions, and it's mm. not only you know sound quality; it's also the space you have, exactly. is, the mm. space you have, you are allowed to occupy, mm. the way you you know enter a, a piece, or you know that, for example, the first edition of uh, Lisboa Sua. I mean, it was completely an experience because we didn't know. Uh, how the audience would react. Yeah. You know, the audience is very f formatted to this kind of standard narrative of uh, mm -hmm. beginning uh, mm -hmm. uh, development and mm -hmm. an end, and, which is uh, what happens in a, a concert. Uh, uh, but for example, in a, in a sound installation, then you don't have this, uh, this, this time flow. You, you can just give your own time to it. And um, for me, that's the real experience. I, you know, I, I once discovered this. I, I went to the Dream House. Did you ever go there? The Dream House from La Montiagui in New York. I went there no. like 2005 mm -hmm. or yeah. six. Mm -hmm. And I think it was one of, it was right in the beginning when I started, I mean, to write and uh, doing my research on this, on this field. And it was a very physical thing because I entered this place and it seemed to me I wouldn't be there for more than 10 minutes. Mm. And then I stood like for one hour and a half. Yeah. I mean, the, the time just stopped. Yeah. And when I left, this was so physical. All the experience was so intense that, I mean, I, I felt like I went to a massage or something <laughs> because <laughs> I was really floating. And then I... I mean, for me, this was very revealing. This, um, you know, this this time you need to give. I would. I mean, if you go to a, a painting exhibition, you can stand for uh, five seconds and really retain this image in your mind. Mm. So it's a, a more, you know, external thing. But at mm. the same time, it's it's very immediate. You will look at, at the photograph, and you mm. can just keep this in your memory. Yeah. With sound, it really has the time frame mm. that you need to consider and uh mm. this is something that you need to create the conditions in my opinion for this yeah absolutely so. and 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 also as a as a way to um 
to to debate or to uh, put in conflict um, these traditional frames of, of how uh, the listening experience is um, uh, has a year uh, hierarchy hierarchy I don't know how to say it mm -hmm. in, uh, hierarchy yeah <laughs> hierarchy you know <laughs> uh, when you have exactly <laughs> when you have the stage um, there is something happening full frontal it's thrown to you without no expectations in this case you are you are deliberately saying by just placing because this is something that uh, is not that well regarded i mean uh, when you have a sound technician and he's going to organize you a stage with two speakers a sub mm. and the audience sitting in front but suddenly when you're saying no 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 we're not going to do that we're going to do crazy stuff it suddenly yeah. just by doing this you are being super political in in a sense that you are saying, okay, this this can be listened in different ways. Mm -hmm. It kind of mm, democratize um, the listening experience and, and brings bring it to another level, which is interesting. And we are not even talking about the creative process behind the art; it's just the creative process of organizing a concert, which for me mm. it's it's uh, it's yeah. as crucial as the as the piece itself, as the the art piece yeah. itself. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, and I'm saying this um, because people watching and listening. Um, I think it's important to say. I don't know if you're gonna <laughs> if we're allowed to say that, but but there is also this level on Lisboa so of uh, curatorship in the sense that you are inviting people in, uh, artists um, to present their work, but you interfere on that, which is uh, not in a bad in a bad sense. In in a super great sense, it's like okay, le w I want you to do this in this specific mm. location, and that is something that is also really really interesting for 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 an artist working and being involved on that process i don't know if, if you you really enjoy that right <laughs> i enjoy it a lot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i really enjoy it a lot and um <clears throat> but it's also <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry it's also good for me to have this feedback from from you as who was a, a participating art invited artist uh, a couple of years ago i mean um what exactly is this uh, role of the curator in this kind of the uh, processes? You know, what kind of partnership can be created? Because, for I mean, but obviously, uh, for example, in, in in the case of your sound installation, it had to do with your initial idea. I mean, this is the, the this is the essence. There's a, of course, obviously, when when in that particular edition we were at the water reservoir wars, and obviously mm. the the topic was water. Yeah. And um, so I mean, it 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 came out from your uh, uh, initial idea yeah. re regarding yeah. the topic. Then mm. I, I like I enjoy this, you know, to go to the space, go there often. Mm -hmm. be there spend hours yeah. there mm -hmm. and imagine okay where to put uh, you know where to w which locations you can mm -hmm. use mm -hmm. and uh, what what can you explore what can you give to the artists mm -hmm. and this is the part of the process that i enjoy the most i think i mean i enjoy all, all parts of the pro well there are a few parts uh, <laughs> that i don't enjoy so much yeah, paperwork <laughs> <Mostly> <laughs> related, yeah. paperwork funding things yeah, like yeah, this yeah, yeah, i yeah. hate that really yeah um it's a very difficult part of the process mm. but uh, all the rest is very i mean rewarding and mm. it's a very it's a sharing experience mm. you also talked about the uh, the sound technician uh, you met uh, our sound director which mm. is the the name that uh, he he deserves because he's a, he's a, i mean he's a guy from you know uh, uh, concerts uh, regular concert situations so he never did installations before this is very difficult for a yeah. a, a, mm. a sound technician yeah. at usually operates you know in rock concerts pop concerts whatever fado concerts yeah yeah it's whatever completely different. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. whatever and mm -hmm. and and how you respond it has to be a very special person to do it i think yeah because we, it's a lot mm -hmm. we are i mean it, yeah yeah and have this this uh, sensibility of understanding that that the format can mm -hmm. shift and and it's not like stereo yeah. subs and mm -hmm. off you go there is it can be much more um, exactly. Yeah, and uh, and of course, if you are constantly changing venues, which is what more or less happens every year, um, t t the difficulties add up and pile up on top mm. of each other. 
but this mm -hmm. is important for me it's it's crucial because um, it's it's a topic nobody talks that much about it is about what happens like the making of of this kind of festival and 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 it's crucial because it's what it what really makes the difference between programming and creating at some point uh, mm -hmm. which I like to compare creating to take care of <laughs> in the good sense again <laughs> not in the bad sense and and it's important because it's what it, what it's gonna end up translating into something um, remarkable or something that it, it reaches the people and um, mm -hmm. and of course the locations and all these um, different brand news you work for uh, you work on um, I don't know what I want to say anymore well, I, I think more or less we covered that. Um, there is also um, um, the previous experiences and also your research. How how this um, relates to to the fact that that you're working constantly with with uh, public space, the city itself, more or less, uh, you could say, or, or the soundscape of the city. Um, your previous research or your permanent research on that. Um, it does also pile up in your process of, of doing Lisboa Sora, right? Um, it's like, yes. It's like uh, putting on practice at some point, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I, I always, I mean, when, uh, when I have, for example, uh, when in my kids' school I have to fill the, you know, profession, <laughs> <laughs> I always stare a bit what to say because <laughs> it's difficult i have a lot of uh, uh, it's terrible yeah. so i usually put researcher because mm. i i feel that uh, this all comes out of research and yeah. mm -hmm. obviously you know as i told you i first my my i mean i i came from uh, video work i was doing in 2003 more or less uh, a project related to world tradition in portugal mm -hmm. and then i was i started to do a master in in communication sciences mm -hmm. and i was like trying to figure out uh, i didn't want to be in the library yeah. i wanted to be in the streets mm -hmm. so as I had this project, which made me travel around the country and collecting, you know, oral tradition uh, things, um, I was feel, started to research about sonic identity, mm -hmm. and then I discovered Murray Schaffer. Mm -hmm. I read The Turning mm -hmm. of the World, mm -hmm. and uh, and obviously that then I decided to follow for a PhD and focus a research in the city that I was living, which is Lisbon. Mm -hmm. So, but again there is something interesting in this because then you relate a lot with noise topics mm -hmm. and this is not what I would like to be relate with I mean noise is a, a relevant issue from our soundscape mm -hmm. but also I would like to put it in another position which is to think of sound as a, a resource mm -hmm. uh, you know where you can really understand and change things in yourself and around you so mm -hmm. And and also, I mean, noise are, is a problem that is huge in in many cities, mm -hmm. and uh, it became you know uh, uh, a health topic, a public health topic, also from you know European Union and so on, and institutions all over. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I think in the beginning, also because coincidentally there was like three years ago or something uh, uh, a big. Uh, movement of people that were living in Lisbon and were really annoyed by uh, uh, noise. Yeah. And so I was facing myself in this position where I was asked to deal with this topic often. Uh -huh. And mm. and then you, how do you explain, uh, uh, you know, because usually people when think about sound, they always think about the problem related to sound, yeah. which is what annoys yeah. them. Mm. And of course, obviously, this is a real problem that needs to be solved. But mm. uh, I mean, uh, it's not uh, it's not the, the extreme. And so, I, I, when this movement of people concerned with noise started, I was invited to join these meetings, and I was thinking a lot about this because when people think about noise as something that annoys them, they uh, hope and desire silence as something that. They would like to achieve yeah but then uh, you don't really want silence also. yeah and so, then there comes a the pandemic and nobody thinks and, they are, they, yeah. it's silent and the city is not silent at all it's at like all. everything is, is, the only thing is that 
humans are gone <laughs> I mean, exactly. it's just birds <laughs> and yeah. that's not silence at all yeah. and there's a lot of life that you didn't know about mm, exactly yeah yeah, yeah. so mm. yeah this is this was something i mean and and as you you know this what i'm going to say because you are all, also in this field for a long time so uh, in the beginning, I mean, when I uh, when I started, you would speak about you know sound and acoustic ecology and sound art, mm. and I mean it seemed like kind of uh, exotic uh, thing. Uh, but now everyone speaks, and also in the pandemic, everyone was speaking about what yeah. they were listening to. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you know when your acoustic horizons uh, <laughs> expand. Yeah. Hmm. Your awareness expands also. Mm -hmm. This is a, a, a something very clear for me. Yeah, that that's something. I, I'm, I'm, at least I see it in this way. The only I don't know if it's a good thing or whatever, but uh, it, the pandemic has been a, a very interesting laboratory um, to put on practice or or to at least I, I've been answering um, on interviews on the press during the whole pandemic about the silent and non-silent thing. Um, mm. They were asking constantly, talking so much about it, which I hope it pans out uh, into something. Uh, the the first thing I, I said on Twitter that the, that they are talking constantly about the silent silence. I said that this is not quiet. It's what we were saying two minutes ago that is not silent at all. It's, it's that humans and traffic is are gone. So now you hear everything. It's like mm -hmm. your 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 sound horizon has gone like crazy. Exactly. Um, so in in that sense, it happened also to you, I guess that that people is suddenly aware about something we have been saying for many, many years. <laughs> and and it, it resonates positively in the sense that that, yeah, of course, if you take away all the cars, <laughs> the health issues are gone. <laughs> yeah, of course, if you close all bars, I'm sorry about that, but it's quiet at night. Um, yeah. So we, maybe it's a, it's a way to start talking about these things and, and to put it on the on the front end of, of the conversation. I don't know. Yeah, and then and then you go into the planning topic, uh, urban planning oh. topic. So I mean, it's a, I mean, the pandemics. Uh, I don't. I don't think uh, it's brought uh, good things or mm. many good things. It m most of the things related to pandemics are really bad. Yeah. Uh, but there is a kind of awareness or it was like, I mean, I felt this uh, uh, like a chance, maybe, mm -hmm. but not that I'm very, uh, sorry to say this, no, not no, very no. optimistic no, with no, humanity. Neither, neither. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any illusions that, that things uh, are changing or anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone is thriving to get back into the massive consumption and yeah. massive mobility and transportation and so on. Yeah. But mm -hmm. for the people that really can do something like the you know politicians and the urban planners this should be a clear message and this should be an opportunity to rethink because i again in the in the case of lisbon which i have to say i left uh, like uh, four years ago i live outside of the city mm. uh, so my for example during the pandemics my soundscape did, didn't change so much because yeah. it's silent yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. almost uh, mm. I, I think I'm, I'm very lucky in that sense, but yeah. I don't live in the center. I'm, mm. I'm away. I'm in the peripheric part of, of, of the city. Mm. And, um, but, uh, I mean, I think the decision makers, uh, could take this chance to, to reconsider because I mean, for example, in the last years in Lisbon, the entertaining, um, uh, mm open air discotheques became it's not a problem of the bars i mean everyone i uh, i uh, i'm a, i i love the nightlife so yeah. i go out at night whenever i can and i go to, into bars and i like to dance and miss all that that's not a problem this should uh, i mean happen this we sh we need these places we really yeah. need these places mm -hmm. for our you know happiness um but of course obviously they need to be it it needs to be planned where to yeah. to put these places also the acoustic need to be considered yeah. when uh, in right in the beginning of any project mm. so mm. and it has to involve also um because sometimes they are not in the conversation that much um architects um and yeah of course urban planners but also architects uh, who 
it's always surprising when I talk to them because th they are some of them they are starting to talk about it at least here in Spain uh, but they mm. basically worry about acoustic panels and stuff like that but not really mm. on how this affects hu uh, like um, daily life I mean it's like yeah th mm. this building is beautiful but it sounds awful <laughs> it's, exactly. it's, it's a terrible place to be to be listening to to have just your ears open it's just better put exactly. your headphones and forget about it um, and uh, uh, in fact, it, it has to be like um, a cross multidisciplinary thing because uh, finally sound and soundscape, and I guess you, you agree with that, it's something that you can confront from any perspective. And 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 it, it, it's like uh, I, I always compare it with photography when it came out. It's like, yeah, it's, it's a system to observe the world and, mm -hmm. and, and it's going to tell us a lot of things and we can do plenty of things with, with, with it. Um, yeah, I wanted to um, I wanted to talk about SOA, uh, the, um, the festival, uh, the book, sorry, the festival, the, <laughs> the documentary, <laughs> and we can play, you're not going to see it because of the thing, but uh, okay. we're going to play the trailer, um, okay. and then we talk a little bit about, about this documentary. I'll Sounds get back cool. in a second. That was um, the um, trailer for this uh, documentary that uh, came out last year, yeah, and um, uh, it encompasses a lot of the things we have been talking already. Um, but it's a um, uh, it's a long, long run project of yours. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Soa. Okay, uh, so I mean, it started. Um, I, I, in fact. It, to be honest, it started right in the beginning because, uh, as I mentioned, I, I, I came from video and documentaries. So, um, I mean, when I started to research, I started to collect a lot of interviews. Mm -hmm. Then, I mean, uh, all the times I traveled, I always went out and record and, uh, you know, search for these kind of ambiences. And mm -hmm. then I started to organize events and uh, document everything mm. so in a way this is uh this is uh, a work that uh, concentrates all these different uh, activities but also um i mean it started as a series it's a five episode series of 25 minutes each mm -hmm. uh that will be screened uh uh, in this year of 2021 um, in R by RTP2, which is a public uh, TV channel related to culture and a uh, nice TV channel, a rare <laughs> TV channel. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it started as a series and mm. it, I'm, I'm now finishing it. Mm. Um, but then in the middle of the process, it's been a long, long, long way. Mm. Uh, I des decided to to edit a, a, a film version, mm -hmm. a more film version, so mm -hmm. to say, which is a, sh a shortened one because, you know, it's more or less half of the the time if mm -hmm. we consider it all together. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, it approaches uh, so many topics and I've been lucky enough to, you know, uh, being... Uh, uh, surrounded by uh, uh, amazing uh, people, uh, field recordists, mm. sound artists, sound thinkers, mm. um, uh, practitioners uh, on different levels yeah. of this area. And so, I mean, it's, 
not that it brings any answers, but uh, I ho hopefully it raises uh, some discussion topics. Yeah. So there's always this kind of pedagogic mm. um, urge. Uh, and yeah. um, mm. It strikes to me like uh, um, I saw it uh, the other day. Uh, you sent me a private version of it. Which uh, thank you very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told you before that I really enjoyed it because it got me out to record the, to record after a long time. So this is it, the best it, thing you can say for it, me. It did the trick, so it, it did work. Um, but it, it strikes to me that um, uh, I, I don't know if it's uh, yeah we can call it a documentary, but it's for me it's like uh, it's like a sound walk even um, mm. in the sense that um, it also can. I, I was thinking also when I was watching it that it, you can also watch it or even not watch it just listen to it because the soundtrack by the way it's it's really great how how you mix all the um, and also it doesn't unfold like a conventional documentary which that's, that was a surprise for me because there are no names um there is no specific information of who is who which it doesn't really matter um on that end and and for those who haven't seen it and, and hopefully you can you will be able to see it in the future um it has this this um this this kind of wondrous um, way of watching it, the narration and the way the topics are divided, which I'm guessing the chapters on the TV show, it's going to be like, uh, because... More divided. Yeah, but even so, in the documentary, you can, you don't know when the, the topic is shifting, but it does, and it shifts like naturally, and suddenly like, okay, now we are talking about space, now we are talking about different aspects, it's like it comes from the very beginning, like, uh, they are like core ideas, um, this mm. one, some sort of 101 of uh, sound and the idea of listening, but at the same time, uh, as you get into it, the documentary it becomes more complex and and I guess it has a lot of layers. I don't know. It's been I guess it's been like crazy to mix all these voices and sounds uh, <laughs> <Tell me laughs> to about put it together <laughs> because I was thinking it's like oh my god, this is a ton of um, reels of of interviews yeah. with amazing guys who you just p p p I mean the the Aki Suzuki interview. I would like to see the whole thing through. No, I, I this is something I will do afterwards because mm, yeah. I mean I have uh, so many material mm, and uh, so many yeah. interviews, mm. amazing interviews and mm. conversations mm. and uh, I mean I really need to put this uh, and offer this to the you know to everyone interested because it's uh, it's a material that I feel that it's uh, I I need to do that but it's a project. Mm for afterwards because i mean this has been a really long uh, mm. process and everyone that uh, accompanies me on this uh, on my life knows mm. how this is completely immersed yeah mm. and uh, it's i have to say that it's um, first it's a, a very lonely process mm. the editing process yeah. because i mean the editing uh, i never managed to share the editing yeah. I tried, mm. but uh, it's very difficult. Yeah. Um, and this is something that I I hope I will not repeat in the future because <laughs> you need to share these things. I mean, it's very yeah, really. Believe me, I yeah, and yeah. I'm being very honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I mean, I edited the, all these material hours and terabytes of yeah everything you can imagine mm. and try to make a narrative that can be understood by anyone mm. Mm. so of, obviously all these very technical parts or very scientific parts are yeah. very difficult I, I mean I, the idea is to bring because then you i mean i, I also do research and because of this i have to write thesis i i had to write thesis mm. and it's not so natural for me, no. And um, and then you do a PhD, for example, and uh, like five, six, seven people read the the thing. Yeah. And yeah. I also think that there are better people to do that than me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, and I also like this. I don't. Uh, I mean, I can be in my computer editing all night long. This is something that yeah. I always enjoyed. This, uh, you know, immersed environment in mm -hmm. between my headphones mm -hmm. and myself and mm -hmm. my uh, uh, super richful uh, <laughs> thoughts yeah, that yeah. have been that mm -hmm. I've been collecting. So 
but it's uh, the editing process was uh, not easy. Uh, sometimes I felt I was like uh, completely, you know, smashed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but uh, I don't know. I have uh, I also have a very real life with kids, and also I had to put my feet on the ground all the time, <laughs> and I have to maintain them because then I, I could be editing just... forever. No? <laughs> <laughs> forever. <laughs> And so, but yeah, finally, this is coming to an end. I, I, I mean, like all these uh, art tasks, you put yourself into. Sometimes you doubt, mm. uh, but then I mean, just give it to an end and go and do other things. But this is something. I mean, to, for example, the interview with Akiyu, which is mm. beautiful yeah. from mm. the beginning to the end. It's mm. it, it talk, talks like if uh, it was an haiku. You know, it's yeah, always yeah. very. Mm graphic and poetic at mm. the same time mm. it, but uh, I mean so many beautiful interviews mm. also uh, with uh, for example Peter Cusack who mm. became a huge friend mm. uh, during uh, I mean uh, he also appears in the Soundwalkers mm -hmm. so this yeah. is when I met him in 2006 mm. or seven or something mm. and since then we've been meeting with, you know, uh, once uh, in a while here and there, but then it became more um, profound, this kind of connection. So, the, for example, it's uh, someone with whom I've recorded a lot of this material mm. in Berlin or in London or mm. even in, uh, in Chile and Valparaíso. Mm. Um, and uh, this, this uh, you know, uh, as I as I said, I know in many times it's a lonely process the work I've been doing. So for me, it's like a blessed mm. uh, blessing when I can get to sh to be with someone yeah. and sharing and working mm. together. And yeah, yeah. So yeah, I guess it has to be for sure because it's like. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, I mean, in in on the end run, um, it the documentary it comes like super it looks like it's barely edited in one night <laughs> because it's like it's like waves it goes comes and goes it's like it's it has a lot of music on it uh, not literal music which it also has but it has a musicality the way that the sound is mixed the way the voices are coming in and out the way the places where you record those interviews because the, the voices are constantly changing um and that 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 is what it takes me away from the idea of a uh, documentary it's something completely different i think it's um yeah it's it's I, I i was thinking constantly about the idea of, 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 of that was a, a song walk that started in lisbon and ended up in in chile um at some point because it, it ends almost there uh which uh, mm -hmm. yeah with the, the, the elevator it's a political line. part I yeah mean. yeah and i also really love that 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 specific point at the end of it all um that it sounds like an epilogue but it's triggering also all the um, all the all the movement happened in in Chile, and specifically that specific performance the um by the girls um yeah it has it's 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 just my <laughs> goosebumps almost yeah because it's so so powerful i don't know guys uh, listening or watching we are talking about this performance the uh, don't Baguette. it has a name i don't know the name it goes last last easy it's a right. feminist protest that became viral mm. but it was worn in chile mm -hmm. and i was like I mean, I was in Tsunami, an amazing yeah. sound art festival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to talk with them one. also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you do. You should. Yeah, it's they are amazing. I really like Tsunami. I was there in 2016, so there's a lot of material from Chile because I went there twice. Mm -hmm. Once in 2016 as a, a, an artistic research uh, residency mm -hmm. where I collected a lot of uh, material for the for mm -hmm. the film. Um, and then in 2019, mm. uh, when there were uh, I, uh, here as an invited curator, what happened was, as you probably remember, uh, in October of 2019, mm. uh, it started these social protests in yeah. Chile. Mm. So there was already it was already arranged that I would go there with a, a group of uh, artists, Portuguese mm. artists, mm. and um, also Tsunami came to Lisboa so in 2019 with mm. a group of Chilean artists. So mm. we, we did this kind of interchange. Mm. But then it came, it became, it's it's the the social protests were really violent and intense. Yes. 
Mm. And um, for ex and then uh, Fernando, who is the director of the festival, he decided not to call it. A fe everything was cancelled there. Yeah. It was being cancelled. Uh, and so he decided to maintain the festival not as a festival as such, but as a, an encounter, a meeting mm -hmm. uh, of sonic practitioners, mm -hmm. practitioners mm -hmm. um, to reflect on the role of, of sound arts in the context of crisis. Yeah. For me, it's very, uh, because very, uh, I mean, it was the first time I wear a mask in the street mm -hmm. because of uh, tear gas. Yeah. It was super intense. We had to run several times of yeah. tear gas and uh, everything was closed. So, I mean, this was the end of November 2019 mm -hmm. and uh, I wear the first time a mask and I would never imagine that it would... <laughs> yeah, it will become something be... common every day, yeah. I now have yeah. a, 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 a place full of masks. I mean, I would never <laughs> imagine. And now even here, everything is closed. Yeah. So this... Uh, this uh, sense, uh, dystopian sense, yeah. when you walk into a street with all clo everything closed, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, it's it's like uh, COVID uh, started really in November for me. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. This uh, this idea of yeah. what is happening around yeah. us, I mean, yeah, yeah. what is going on, and 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 um, this uh, this performance, I also felt that, for example, feminism in in uh, South America and in Chile in particular mm. is uh, it's not it's different from here it's um, I mean feminism is uh, feminism but uh, but uh, I, I felt that um, and then I did a little bit of research because a few things happened that made me question this mm. uh, uh, feminism <laughs> in fact yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, what do I really think uh, of it and uh, mm -hmm. how do I position myself in this in this issue yeah. uh, I, w I never you know I never doubted my feminism mm -hmm. and then I faced myself into s different situations where I needed to question it yeah um, I'm not going into details but it was a, a peculiar experience for me as a woman to be there in this uh, situation this uh, protest, this performance, the last thesis, this uh, big mm. uh, feminist protest, is mm. really, I mean, I was crying when I was there yeah. recording because so. mm. uh, it's it's uh, unimaginable. Yeah, it's mm. uh, hundreds of people. It's really intense. Mm -hmm. uh, this is felt from you know your. It's visceral. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a, a thing that you say something cute to put on your... No, 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 and the lyrics are pretty pretty this obvious is... and straightforward, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is general, I mean, mm -hmm. especially in younger generations, and uh, I mean, so, so then you feel like, for example, in the case of uh, feminism, and also, you know, if you approach this sonically, uh, then you think that, you know, women really have been silenced for uh, mm. uh, centuries. Yeah. And uh, like many other, like, for example, you know, ecosystems or whatever. Mm. Um, and then what do you do to change this? You really need to make some noise. And um, <laughs> yeah. this is <laughs> something that I that I felt that... Um, well, I th I it's, mean, it's in the documentary, it's Fernando maybe saying that... Um, it seems like uh, the the media is calling this protest as noise, but for mm. him, in fact, it's a noise that is pretty clear and he's sending a really specific message. Khan. Yeah, yeah. I think you're talking about uh, uh, no, no, Jason Kahn. Ah, well, cool. uh, okay. He's a Switzerland. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's a mm -hmm. Swiss. Uh, he's, um, I mean, he's an American, but he lives in in yeah. in, mm -hmm. in Switzerland. Um, he does an amazing work uh, because in uh, in Chile, what happened was that. Um, I got to work with a group of artists. Mm. I was supposed to, to be taking, a, uh, I mean, a bigger group of Portuguese sound artists, but I didn't. I didn't got the necessary funding, so mm. we went. We I went with two uh, marvelous artists and big friends, mm. whom I, you also know, Jorge Quintela and Henrique Fernandes. Uh, 
uh, my flatmates, brothers. my flatmates, Your in flatmates. <laughs> they were my flatmates in Chile and uh, it was really nice. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we went together and then uh, uh, other artists from other country, countries joined our group. So there was also Jacob Kierkegaard, mm -hmm. Jason Ken, and mm -hmm. Juan Sorrentino, mm -hmm. who, uh, oh no, Juan Sorrentino was not here in Lisboa, so when you were. Anyway, mm -hmm. so, um, for example, Jason Ken, he does an amazing, impressive, uh, sensitive work. He stays every day, every day, he stood for eight hours in a place just listening, not recording, not uh, mm -hmm. writing, yeah. nothing, Bom. just contemplating sonically. And then he writes about what he hears, but he only writes afterwards uh, mm -hmm. through his memory. It's an amazing, um, mm -hmm. he talks about uh, uh, um, something that I find interesting. He says something that I think it's very important to say is that uh, capitalism is uh, probably the most uh, uh, silencing yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, social mm -hmm. form. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it's not about listening. So yeah, yeah, again, it's, it's the opposite. It's not listening at so all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not listening at all. So mm -hmm. that's why all this, uh, for me, it's uh, uh, really important, you know. And to, mm -hmm. that's why I, I really consider that you must, we should or should try at least to explore our listening, to give it time mm -hmm. and then only afterwards react to it, you know, because this is something that I really feel could change the world. <laughs> And you, now I'm not have, being romantic yeah. about it. You I have fans true. on the chat saying, yeah, yeah, totally agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, 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 is, it is in fact like that. Now we have uh, last few weeks, we had uh, a lot of protests in, in Barcelona and in other cities in Spain because of the imprisonment of this uh, rap uh, singer. Um, and it's super young people burning containers and stuff like that. Um, mm. And basically what they are saying is that we are just doing this because it's the only way you listen. And e even though you don't listen to us because you are just on your media sets with all your mm, uh, other generations talking about our generation and, mm -hmm. and the only demand demand here is just to listen and and that's a that's pretty bold because it it means that listening right now uh, it's it's almost subversive and subversive act by by the fact of focusing on that a friend of mine saying that ambient music is is super political and subversive nowadays because it requires a lot of listening experience and it's like yeah well it's it's like um super soft politically speaking um genre of the music but it does it does what uh, i don't know it brings something about the extreme which will be jason can mm -hmm. i guess but mm -hmm. yeah I don't know if it's 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 somewhere there, so we have to stick on it and 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 consider it as as a battleground, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I like this remark by uh, at the end of the documentary. I want the um, last thing because we are running out of time. Um, it's about uh, and this is going to be the last because I'm, I'm sure you have stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, it's about been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks. No, it's, yeah. it's been so much fun. Um, and people in the chat are pretty quiet, but I, I guess they are happy. Guys, please come on, say something. Um, <laughs> in any case, um, we want to talk about a little bit uh, about the uh, World Listening Project, which you are involved mm -hmm. in this specific year. Can you tell mm. us about a little bit about it? Uh, well, the World Listening Day has been a, a day that was created by the World Listening Project. Uh, it uh, is the day where, uh, when Murray Schaffer was born, I don't know how many decades ago, but anyway, it's a uh, world uh, day dedicated to, the li to listening. And mm. I was invited to choose the theme for this year, mm. World Listening Day. Mm. And um, because of all of this that we've been talking, yeah. and because of this idea of uh, listening as activism, and also because of these new acoustic horizons that we uh, signaled uh, during mm. the COVID times, mm. uh, I mean, I started to think about this constant roaring, you know, mm. that for, when you pay attention to what usually are hidden sounds mm -hmm. and the, the other layers that are out of your earring range mm. um, then you feel some kind of 
equity in between you and other ecosystems and the nature and the world mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. So it's a way of feeling connected. So this is the topic for this year. It's uh, uh, the the topic is uh, the the title of it is the unquiet earth, as mm -hmm. if the the earth is really trying to say something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what can you do uh, to really understand it? And obviously, if you go into other uh, sounds outside your earring range or mm -hmm. hidden underwater or mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, aerial or infra ultrasonic sounds whatever mm. all of these can bring you new uh, lenses into the world and try to understand it and especially this idea of pay attention to your listening mm -hmm. because the world is trying to tell us something and maybe we should pay attention to <laughs> exactly. it exactly yeah no, it's amazing because uh, you know guys um world listening day is 18th of july which in spain mm -hmm. is a fastious and horrible day because the, it marks the beginning of the civil war <laughs> which okay. is which is it's some i it it, so it a, triggers a, stuff to me that i don't know how to relate to but i tried so so far to do so but it's a day where and generally in that week there is a lot of activity going on and also the world listening project what it does is kind of collects and funnels all all mm -hmm. activity around the world surrounding that so if you have uh, organized if yeah. you want to organize something locally you can send them the information and they're gonna do some promotion and, and think mm -hmm. oh, I, i've been doing this there's a yeah there's a there's a form in the web uh, uh, that can be uh, filled if people should you know uh, send their proposals we are working on ways of disclosuring these uh, participations and um uh, so, I mean, the, the World Listening Day uh, celebrates listening through a topic and through everyone's participation in mm -hmm. different initiatives around the world. So, mm -hmm. um, people can join this kind of movement and it's really important uh, and a, 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 an interesting project also. So, yeah, cool. it's important to have a day dedicated to listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we'll do so. I, I guess we're going to do something here. Um, we'll see. We haven't yes. talked talk yet, but uh, it's a few months ahead. So for sure, we're going to do something on that day. Uh, Raquel, it's, it's been amazing. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank for, you, Edu. For thank you so here. much <laughs> for inviting me and for the nice conversation. It's always yeah. a pleasure. To speak uh, there you. is a lot of, of processing that the guys in chat are telling like that they are quiet because they are listening carefully. So it's so interesting, <laughs> everything in your talk. Better stay quiet and listen. And there is a, okay. a Sergio friend is also saying that uh, the day we start to listen in the earth, it will mean it will lead to a change uh, to tranquility. He says for everybody, and 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 I think yeah. we can all agree to that. Yeah. I agree, we, and we all agree. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Raquel. Um, thank you, Edu. I'll see you around. We will be. Hope uh, we can meet. Yeah. Uh, soon. Hope yeah, yeah, and and as soon yeah. as you have news about Lisboa Sola 2021, uh, we want to know about mm, it. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank you, Edu. Thank you. So so nice to meet you. Bye bye. Stay in touch.
Pues qué maravilla, oye, que súper a gusto con Raquel Castro, que, que ya se, se tenía que ir a hacer sus cosas. Um, gracias a todos por estar ahí y, y escuchar tan atentamente y no decir ni mu. Espero que mi micro ya se escuche un poco mejor. Lo he estado arreglando eh, sobre el camino. La entrevista íntegra la vamos a colgar en podcast y también la vais a tener en, en, en el YouTube porque aquí no hay copyright que valga. Eh, no me ha quedado claro si se va, podrá ver en algún lado el que la, la entrevista, eh, Richie. Eh, si es la entrevista, eso va, va a estar subida en YouTube, va a estar aquí. ¿Sabe? Hemos descubierto que ahora eh, Twitch deja los vídeos colgados dos meses, con lo cual podemos eh, se pueden ver durante un montón de tiempo. El documental, el documental Soa, eh, lo que pasa es que el documental está haciendo. Ella ha hecho una versión para festivales, que es de una hora de duración, que es el que he visto yo, que está en privado. Y, y por ahora solo se puede ver en circuito de festivales. Luego se va a estrenar en la RTP2, que es como la 2 de Portugal, y se va a estrenar en cinco capítulos distintos, que es más largo. En realidad creo que llega como casi a las dos horas en, en el conjunto. Y yo supongo que a partir de entonces estará, estará disponible. Eh, yo, yo no se lo he comentado a Raquel, pero una de las intenciones es que a nosotros nos gustaría emitirlo. Y, y, pero bueno, eso es algo que ya hablaremos <risa> en el caso, porque es, es una preciosidad. Podéis ver, sí, en el Vimeo de, de Raquel Castro, eh, Sound Walkers, que sí que está disponible. A ver si os lo puedo compartir ahora. Eh, a ver, un segundito. ¡Ay, qué bien que tengo el OBS todo mono y preparadito y bien puesto! Eh, en el Vimeo de Raquel... Que supongo que es Vimeo, ta, 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 ese mismo. Copiar. Ahí tenéis todo su trabajo. Eh, y, y, podéis, y ahí podéis bucear en toda su obra. Y también abajo del todo, porque creo que es el primero que subió. Ti, 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 es que lo estuve buscando ayer. Eh, lo estáis viendo esto, ¿no? Sí. Vale. En algún sitio está el documental Son Walk, es que es de 30 minutitos, es muy parecido a, a Soa, porque tiene el mismo, el mismo rollo, y, y bueno, es una primera versión este, este de aquí. De hecho, os puedo compartir el, el enlace directo, copiar. Y ya digo, este es el que hizo en 2008, y al de ahora es, eh, es una versión como un poco más sofisticadilla del de lo que hay, pero se repiten, por ejemplo, mucho los, los la gente que habla y tal. Es, es muy chulo. La verdad es que ya es lo que le he dicho a ella. Yo cuando lo, el otro día vi el documental y llevaba meses sin salir a grabar y, y al día siguiente de, de verlo, eh, eh, nada, me fui a grabar. O sea, que, 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 que te desperta cosas muy chulas. Y sí, sí, lo de la tele es raro, eh, pero bueno, ya lo veréis. Y nada, poco más. Eh, recordaros que tenéis... Eh, esta semana tenemos programa todos los días hasta el viernes. Mañana a las eh, 11 tenemos Nubul de Fum, no es Jauma. Y, y el jueves tenemos eh, dentro del círculo que va a empezar ya el especial Audiosfera. Y el viernes tenemos The Net Lab con nuestros queridos Pele y Mede. <risa> eh, eso, no me faltéis mañana al, al, al Nubul de Fum. <risa> Media se tiembla así, bueno. Eh, de entrada... A mí ya me está faltando el agua. Así que nada, chicos, eh, yo creo que lo voy a dejar aquí eh, por hoy. Y, y nada, que, que lo goséis. Espero que estéis todos bien y que todo bien. Ah, también podéis volver a ver, si queréis, también el, el 24 horas de ayer de All Female, que la verdad es que salió súper bien. Tuvimos muchos, muchos visionados, más de 900 personas lo han visto. Y, y la verdad es que estamos súper contentos de la reacción que ha habido. Y... Poco más, suscribíos, eh, donad, mmm, esas cosas de la twitchada. Venga, buenas tardes. Chao a todos.